Hey everybody, it's Major Cunningham again. Just going to walk you through some examples of plane change problems today. So again, I uh, pulled out last year's homework, which is a, I think a good example, and I'll go ahead and press. So question one is a conceptual question. I'll let you guys look that up and listen in class and take notes. I am here for the math part. So the first problem says, a remote sensing satellite is in a circular orbit with an altitude of a thousand kilometers and inclination of 28 and a half degrees. Operators must perform a maneuver to change the inclination to 90 degrees. Calculate the total delta V required to complete this maneuver in the most fuel efficient manner. Assume both orbits have the same ran. So this ends up being a very easy money kind of a problem. Your first step here, we're told that we have a circular orbit with an altitude of a thousand kilometers. So I'm going to write out my V circ equation, which equals the square root of mu over r. Which r do we use? Well, the radius of our orbit, which for a circle is the same as the sum of major axis. And that's the same as the radius of the Earth plus the satellite's altitude. And that's going to give us 7378.137 kilometers. So that's great. So we'll go ahead and plug that in for this R. Okay, that gives us about 7.35 kilometers per second. Okay, now that we have that velocity, we can pull out our equation sheet. Well, we should have it out already. We're going to use this uh, delta V sub S equals 2VI sine theta over 2. Okay, so let's break that down for a second. So what we want to know here is it's kind of interesting with other, you know, the delta V for a home and transfer, we, we literally were looking at changes in speed, right? We wanted to change from a bigger orbit to a smaller or a smaller to a bigger, which required either adding or, well, adding some speed or subtracting some speed from our orbit, speeding up to slow down or, or slowing down to speed up. With a plane change, you're using that fuel instead uh, to change the inclination of your orbit. So, Delta V sub S stands for delta V of simple plane change. In this case, equation sheet tells us that it's 2 times the initial velocity. Well, that's what we just calculated. Initial velocity means the velocity before the burn. And then sine of theta over 2. And this theta, let's see, I'll we'll write it up here. This theta is the amount of inclination change that you would like to accomplish. Oh, there we go. So we, we want to go from 90 to 28.5. So we have a lot of inclination change. We want to do 61.5. So just want to make sure my calculator is in degrees mode since that's in degrees. Let's plug and play. 2 times 7.35 kilometers a second. Sine of 61.5 all over 2. Let's see how much delta V we need to make this happen. We need seven point I'm gonna carry three seven point five one six kilometers per second of delta V. Ouch. To give you some context when the space shuttle was still operating, if it burned all of its onboard fuel when it was on orbit, it could it could achieve about three degrees of uh, plane change, of inclination change. 
So this problem is, is really extreme to show you how much delta V it would take to really make this happen. But no one in real life goes from 28.5 degrees, which is that latitude of Cape Canaveral, right, all the way up to a polar orbit. What we try to do instead is launch directly into a polar orbit. But it's a good example just for the sake of the, learning the problem. Okay. Now let's take things to the next level. This problem is called a combined plane change. And instead of just staying in the same size orbit and changing inclination, that was last scenario. This scenario, where what we're going to try and do is an orbital transfer like a Hohmann transfer. But at one of these points, one of these dots that I'm trying to draw here, one of these points, we're also going to do a simple plane change. Now, there's actually an equation that combines those two. So the burn that you do, whether it's in here or out here, you can you can efficiently combine it with the Hohmann transfer burn. So here's what I here's what I mean. In a Hohmann transfer. You have a delta V1 and a delta V2, right? Those combine to give you the delta V total of the maneuver. Hohmann transfers are transferring between two orbits with the same inclination. A combined plane change, by contrast, also does a delta V, I should say by comparison, I guess, delta V1 and a delta V2. But one of these is going to also include a delta V simple, if you want to call it that simple plane change, and then our total delta V will add up the same way. So let's just do it, and I'll show you what I mean. In the last problem, we used this equation right here, that delta V simple was 2 times the initial velocity times sine of theta over 2. Using similar triangle math and trig, the delta V combined plane change takes that equation, mashes it together with a Hohmann transfer burn, and you get delta V sub C, which is delta V combined. And that equals the velocity right before you execute the combined plane change burn, the velocity after you execute the combined plane change burn, and the cosine of theta. And theta is, again, the inclination delta that you want to accomplish, the inclination change between the two orbits. So let's see how we execute that. First things first drawing my picture here, we're starting off in a very low Earth orbit here. This is this is 200 kilometers above the Earth, like nothing stays up there for very long. So what this looks like really is a parking orbit of a satellite. In a circular orbit, both are circular. We're going to go from inclination of 28.5, again that's Cape Canaveral. So something is launching into a parking orbit from Cape Canaveral, and then we want it to put it in this very distant orbit, and this is actually the uh, seven major axis of a geostationary orbit. Just happen to know that when you're in the biz. Uh, and then with an inclination of zero. Those are fundamental properties of a geostationary orbit. And of course, RAN is undefined when your orbit sits on the equator all the time. So here's how we do this. Thankfully, blissfully, the math is really, really similar to a Hohmann transfer. It's almost identical, and I add one more step at the end. And so really, if you learn how to do Hohmann transfers, you're also getting all the points for learning how to do a, a combined plane change. But there's one fundamental rule. This is really important. If you want to accomplish the combined plane change burn at the most distant possible point from the Earth. I'm going to make it more general, I'm going to say from the planetary body. So 
So let's look at my picture. I'm going to label this guy as orbit one because he is the smaller inner orbit, the parking orbit. This will be our transfer orbit, this little dotted line. And then, of course, our mission orbit will be way out here at number two. Now, my two options are this. I can, I can take my home and transfer burn here at orbit number one, and I can combine that with my plane change. That's one option. Or I could wait and just do a normal home and transfer burn in here to get out of the parking orbit and then do the combined plane change burn out here, which again, will combine that home and transfer, that second burn I'd have to do out here with the combined plane change. This rule, this rule says that we should do our combined plane changes for fuel efficiency's sake. I'll write that. farthest from the Earth. So between these two options, um, I want to do my combined plane change out here because it's much, much farther. 42, 160 kilometers is a much bigger sign major axis than 6,500, right? On the order of six, five to six times as big, seven times almost. So let's see how that manifests. All right. Oh, I shouldn't. I don't want to write step one. I don't want you to think that's... Well, actually... Everything having to do with orbit one? Sure, I'll put it in step one. Let's do that. So remember the velocity we're going in orbit number one, I, I term V1. And then right after we do our first burn, that's VT1. VT2. And V2, we're going to calculate exactly the same way as before. So and when I say before, I mean our home and transfer homework that we did last time. Uh, so V sub one is a circular orbit and I'm going to use radius one, which again, we get to use some major axis straight off of what was given because we're not like in the previous problem. We had to actually find, you guys remember we had to find our some major axis by adding the altitude to the radius of the earth. We don't have to do that because whoever wrote this problem was nice enough just to give us the center major axis raw. We don't have to worry about ad adulterating it in any way. So let's plug and chug as we do. I'm going to carry three decimal places just for the sake of efficiency. It's not as big a deal with home and transfer problems as compared to like the orbit prediction problems we were doing, but ah, a little precision is always nice. So, all right, let's now calculate V1. I'm not going to explain this part too terribly much because uh, it is so similar to the home and there's just the pure, simple vanilla home and transfer. You guys can take a look at that in the previous video. Remember that we're still using R1 here and our epsilon. We're going to use this definition of it, negative mu over 2a. What's a? a is, in this case, semi major axis of the transfer orbit. And we're going to add the inner orbit to the outer orbit. And average them. That's going to give us 24, 369 for the center major axis of our transfer orbit. So now we're ready to plug and chug. Okay, 
Let's see what that gives us. Oops, forgot to put parentheses there. Times two. Here, so boom, 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 boom. Nine by sixty-five, seven, eight. It's double checking my numbers. Something intuitively doesn't seem right to me. Two times twenty-four. Huh? Well, I suppose that's not impossible. Okay. So ten. We are going from a very small orbit to a very, very big orbit. So this is typically the kind of thing that we would use a second stage for, a rocket all to itself. Or we would use a, an Apogee kick motor that's attached to the satellite. That's Its only purpose is to go from Leo to Geo, because that's a big delta V. It's a lot of delta V. So. Or rather, that's a, a big velocity. So I guess what I'm trying to say is when we actually find the, the size of the first burn, do you guys remember its absolute value of the transfer uh, v sub t1 sorry so the speed right after our first burn minus speed over just our vanilla orbit okay so that'll be 10.239er minus 7.784 and that will be 24 Five, five kilometers per second of delta V, <coughs> excuse me, for delta V1. All right, let's repeat that process for the second delta V. All right, V1, or oops, V2 <laughs> equals square mu over R2, right? Speed of that second mission orbit, or second orbit, which is the mission orbit. Do some quick plugging and chugging. 42160. Square root 3.075 kilometers per second. Okay. And then the velocity right after we do ordinarily would do, and this is where things get. Well, I'll show you the extra step after this, but. Again, everything remains the same as the home and transfer mathematically until I tell you differently, and I'll tell you differently in a second with the last step. Okay. So again, as before, this is going to be centimeter axis number two, um, which is R2, right? And then this is going to be Negative mu over two times a of the transfer orbit still. So let's plug and chug. What did we find? That's right. It was 24, 369. Okay, cool. Let's plug and check. Oh, not forgetting our two down there. Second, now, this is where we have to be a little bit careful because what we would ordinarily do is do that absolute value subtraction of VT2 and V2 uh, and then add delta V1 and delta V2 and we'd be done if it were a home and transfer. Here's the extra step though. 
that sets it apart uh, from a home transfer because we're also trying to accomplish our plane change. And up here, we decided we want to do our plane change out at this location because it is so much farther between the two possible home and transfer burns. We're going to choose the outer one to do uh, to attach our simple plane change to and merge it into a combined plane change uh, because it's so much more fuel efficient. So here's the extra step. Because we've chosen the second burn, we're going to do this extra step. We're going to append and add the second step to number two here. Let me show you what I mean. Let's first write the equation for the delta V sub C. It's initial velocity squared plus the final velocity squared minus 2VI, V sub F times cosine of theta. Uh, but wait, we never calculated an initial and final velocity, did we? It turns out we did kind of. <laughs> and what I mean by that is VT2 is the speed of this satellite screaming out towards its mission orbit right before we do this burn. V2 is the velocity after we do that burn. So what this plugs in as, you'll use VT2 for the speed right before you do your combined plane change. You'll use V2 as the speed of the mission orbit right after we do our combined plane change and life is good. And then, of course, you're using the same variables right here. Theta. Theta, we're going to calculate just the same way as we did for our simple plane change. And we're going from 28.5 degrees to zero. So in an absolute sense, we want 28.5 degrees worth of change. Okay, let's see if I can fit this in here. So our VT2 is 1.5 squared plus 3.075 squared minus 2 times 1.598 3.075 cosine of 28.5 degrees. Whew. So there's a lot. Again, make sure your calculator is in degrees mode. And I'm going to say our delta V combined plane change, which again, we're doing as far away from the earth as we can because that's most fuel efficient. Square him plus 3.075 squared minus 2 times 1.598 times 3.075 times cosine of 28.5. Oop, now we need one parentheses. Good. 3.37. And great. I'll take the square root of that. Ah, so the delta V to both uh, get us from our transfer orbit to our final mission orbit and then merging that together with a simple plane change to go from 28.5 degrees down to zero. That value we have just found to be 1.36 kilometers per second. Okay, so that's one piece of the puzzle. Our delta V to get us from the inner orbit, parking orbit to the transfer orbit, that's the, the other piece of the puzzle. And I'm just gonna write the last step up here. I ran out of room as I often do. So in this case, for a combined plane change, for a combined plane change maneuver that we're also doing with a home and transfer. So how do I put this? A home and transfer for which one of the burns has a plane change, we call a combined plane change maneuver. So the delta V total is going to be delta V1 in this case plus delta V combined. So that's what? 2.455 plus 1.836. So all told, this whole thing is going to cost us quite a bit of delta V. That's 
at 4.29 or 1 kilometers per second worth of delta V. Now, let's see. Did we answer the mail on all this? Yep. From the initial order to the final order, the most fuel-efficient manner possible. We've done it. This is an important phrase, the most fuel-efficient manner, right? I keep harping on this. I could have tried and accomplish the plane change in here at this very low and fast parking orbit, but you guys remember the previous problem. The previous problem also put us in a pretty low Earth orbit, and just doing a plane change, although it was a pretty high amount of plane change we were doing, was 7.5 kilometers. That's just unrealistic. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. Yeah, it can be done, but it's so costly that I'm, I'm not aware of any missions where we have actually done that. So what I'm trying to say is if you try and execute a plane change close to the Earth, you're going to pay for it in fuel costs. So when the problem says maneuver from the initial orbit to the final orbit and there's a size difference and an inclination difference, and it says we want fuel efficiency, which duh, everybody wants that, generally speaking, then your first step, draw a picture. Um, huh, I'll call this step zero. Right, That's my first step always. Um, Draw your picture, say where you're going from, outer to inner, or inner to outer. We're going from an inner to outer, right, a small orbit to a big one, much, much bigger. And then select where you're going to do your plane change. Here's what I'm trying to get at. If we were going from a big orbit to a smaller orbit, like we were trying to bring our satellite closer into the Earth, we would still do our plane change out here. It's just that V1 would become our delta VC, and delta V2 would be... You know, we'd put ourselves in this transfer orbit and come back around here to delta V2, which would just be a normal delta V home transfer. So anyway, the math works exactly the same. The only extra step is choosing where you're going to do your combined plane change, and you do that by putting it at the orbit that's farthest away from the Earth because you want the most fuel efficiency, uh, and then actually executing the math for delta VC on whichever of the two that you're going to do your plane change at. Okay, thanks guys. We'll see you next time.